Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, you should go ahead and hit subscribe before we get any further into the video and you realise that this is absolute fucking garbage and you won't want to come back again. If this is not your first time on the channel, you just love some fucking rubbish, get out of my goddamn binge, you fucking raccoon. For today's video, we are looking at one of my absolutely favourite archetypes. In fact, my absolutely favourite archetype, Light Sworn. We are looking at a less pure variant, so for you purists out there, you are probably going to absolutely hate this. I really don't care. We are here to look at some Light Sworn goodness. We are looking at a rank spam variant, rank 4 spam in particular. For the most part, this is incredibly budget friendly and can be incredibly explosive. It's got some nice chaos elements in there, it's got loads of rank plays, it's got light swans, it's got everything that you could possibly love in a deck that just wants to go absolutely fucking crazy. Again, this is one of my absolutely favourite variants of the deck to play. Sadly, rest in peace, Fairy Tale Snow isn't in the game, so it makes this strategy a little bit harder and less consistent. But again, still really budget friendly, can definitely be fun to take to your locals and all that good stuff. With that note in mind, if you are looking to pick up any of the cards from this video after we get to the end, or maybe during it, who, who cares when you want to buy them, then you should check out the link in the description to the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. That is the team I play on, and we can get you a nice cheeky discount on their eBay store using the link in the description. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. You are here for some milling goodness and for some rank goodies. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Before we go any further, let me first apologise if you do hear a loud noise in the background. That is my fan going absolutely fucking mental on my laptop. Hopefully we'll edit some of that out with the audio, but we can't guarantee it. So again, apologies if you hear that in the background. You should be able to hear everything else relatively clearly. As a quick note, again, if you're a purist, you're going to fucking hate it. I told you already. There is a Light Sworn engine in here, though. So at heart, it is Light Sworn, but pretty much just in name. As a quick note as well, we don't have a side deck in here. I think side decks are really important for the events you're attending. I don't know what the fuck you're attending, so I can't tell you what to play. You should really figure that out, depending on what you intend to play against. If it's at Locals, maybe it's a Regional, if you're lucky to have any of those going on at the moment. Maybe you're doing some remote duels, playing with some friends. Again, your side deck options will differ, depending on what you're doing. Anyway, that's enough waffling. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So we start off with the Chaos Baby Dragons. We've got Wyver Burster and Collapse Serpent. These are at one for a reason. They're absolutely insane. Unfortunately, if you do mill them, it's kind of annoying, but Chaos Space allows us to have a way to sort of recuperate them that we didn't necessarily have before, which means that you can actually resolve them multiple times in a duel, which is something that normally you'd miss out on. Again, really important cards. The fact that they can just lead to instant rank force is really, really nice. Uh, we also move on. We've got Chaos Valkyria. This, again, is one of the newer cards that we're able to include in this deck. Uh, it gives us a number of options in the way we want to play. Again, a Chaos Space target allows us to regenerate resources. It allows us to Foolish Burial stuff. Just a really nice card to have. But I think as a one-off, it's perfectly fine. It is worth noting also that it's a Light and it's a Fairy. So that does help us go into our Curious plays, which is always something of a benefit. We have two copies of Starly Schaefer. These are here basically to just get you access to your baby dragons. If you see them in your hand, it's a normal summon that allows you to immediately go into them, which means you can start your plays off from there. Unfortunately, we don't have any searching options for them in terms of uh, the graveyard effect, but otherwise, it seems pretty nice to me. It's a one-card searcher for the others. Just two copies of Lumina in here. Unfortunately, being a level three makes it a little bit more prohibitive to make use of, but it does allow us to get some additional bits on the board. There are cards that we can unclog from our hand. Special summon others out and make quicker rank plays. We can also go into like Securious and all that good stuff, but I'm not going to repeat that for every card. I think most of it is pretty self explanatory. Triple copies of Raiden, probably the best normal summon in the deck. Certainly the best Light Swarm monster in here. Uh, must play. The fact that it's a tuner, the fact that it mills stuff, the fact that it's a warrior, all of that good stuff. Just really important to, as a three of, in my opinion. We have triple copies of Wolf in here because milling these is so incredibly free. Unfortunately, they are a bit of a brick, but running 44 cards and so many different ways to mill, there's a good chance that we just mill them instead, or we have ways to unclog them from our hands anyway. A single copy of Lila here. Unfortunately, not the best normal sub in the deck, but sometimes you just have to get rid of a bit of pesky back row to allow you to go off from there, and this will allow you to do that, giving you a safer way to play the game. We have a single copy of Felice in here. Unfortunately, it does need to be milled off a monster effect rather than something like a spell, so we don't get it if we charge it or if we recharge it so we want to be able to mill it off our monsters ideally uh, and with that in mind that that's why we're just running the one otherwise it can be incredibly cloggy 
is a really nice card to have access to, but just the one is perfectly fine. Triple copies of Goblin Berg. It's a warrior, so you can search it nice and nice and easy. Unfortunately, it's an Earth, so there's a little bit less synergy there, but it is an instant rank 4, which is what the deck is about. So something to really make use of. We're running triple copies of Photon Thrasher. It's a warrior, so again, it's searchable. If you see it in your opening hand, it is a guaranteed body on board because you can just summon it straight away and then go off from there. We then move on, we have our Perform Edge package. We have one copy of Damage Juggler, Trick Clown, and two copies of Hat Tricker. Again, you can up this to three if you wanted to. I just didn't want to get to the point where we start bloating the deck too much. Um, but again, these are all basically free rank fours. Um, being able to be lights as well for the most part, apart from Hat Tricker, of course, has synergy there, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, yeah, just something to really enjoy. You could put in, uh, what's his name? Heroic Challenger, Thousand Blade, whatever the fuck he's called, so you can pair it with your Trick Clown so you can get your free rank for that way. I've decided to omit it from this list, but it's something that you could consider using. We have a single copy of Zephros because being able to bounce stuff to allow you to just get a free summon on board is really handy. Again, it can allow you to go into easier rank fours, all that kind of good stuff. We have a single copy of Dark One because if you have nothing else, you can just foolish it into the grave. It's a free summon, or if, you're, if your field gets wiped out and you don't get killed, you've got a free summon on board the next time. There's a good chance as well that it gets milled into the grave nice and early, which is always good. And then we are playing the Time Thief package, just a small one because, again, it's just a free summon. We're making rank fours nice and quickly so we can get free body on board, being able to search and go off from there. Something that's really nice to have in here, again, just being able to make this and then get the trap into your hand for free gives you a nice free negate during your opponent's turn if you so wish. We then move on to our spells. So we've got triple copies of Soda Recharge. Some people don't like this. I fucking love it. I really insist on including it in my Light Swarm builds. Just nice being able to draw and mill stuff. What's not to like about that? Uh, speaking of milling, we have Charge of Light Brigade. It mills for costs, so what's not to fucking love? A mandatory three of, in my opinion. We have a single copy of Reinforcement of the Army. Uh, again, it searches Warriors, so it searches like half of the deck. A single copy of Foolish Burial, sending any of these cards to the graveyard for the most part is pretty good. We have double copies of Pot of Avarice to be able to reload our deck a little bit. Some people don't like this, but I think being able to... If nothing else, you can stick back a bunch of extra deck monsters that you can churn through and then just draw two free cards. So, you know, what's not to like about that? Again, I think it's a really cool option. I don't think a three of because you really don't want to open it, but you do want to see it a little bit later on in the game. It can be a bit of a uh, oxymoronic card like that in that you, you kind of don't want to see it, but you do, but that's by the by. Triple copies of Chaos Space because we can resolve it, the fact that we can use it, being able to dumb stuff to search, being able to put back the babies and get reuse of those. Just a really important card in the modern build, at least in my opinion. And then finally, as noted, we are running that Retrograde. This is our search target for our Time Thief. We then move on to the extra deck. So we start off with one copy of Minerva. I think one is absolutely fine. If you want to find the space for a second, you can go ahead and do so. It's definitely something that you could try out. I think that one, though, it, it does more than enough. Initially, you want to be able to just make it on your turn once so you can mill stuff and then defend your stuff by popping cards on the field if your opponent gets aggressive. We have a single copy of Redo. It's nice and easy to make. It makes for a good interrupt. It does a lot of good stuff. It's actually a really highly undervalued card, at least in my opinion. We have one copy of Digusto Emerald. This is something, again, that you can omit from your list, but I really like the fact that it is a pseudo pot of Avarice. If you lose your Avarices and you still want a way to regenerate some cards and get them back into your deck and reuse those resources, then this is a good option to make use of. And again, the fact that it's a rank four, nice and easy to make, something that I personally quite like. We have a single copy of Abyss Dweller because some decks just auto lose to it. It's definitely one of the best rank fours in the game. Switching off the graveyard is just absolutely fucking broken. We've got a single copy of Tornado Dragon. You could omit this from your list because we are running Phoenix, but I quite like the fact that it is very easy to make with two fours. You could also run some other really cool rank four toolbox options, stuff like Dugares and that kind of thing, but I think the Tornado Dragon fits in quite nicely here. We have a single copy of Baguska. If we can make a single rank four and we can't do anything else, then this can quite often be a really good option. Just setting this up into defense to pass a few turns to allow us to build the resources we need to go off from there. And this is our really stick out card in terms of budget. Zeus is quite expensive, but again, you can omit this. If you have access to it, though, you should definitely consider running it in here. Otherwise, you can run cards like Utopia Double, all that kind of good stuff, just other options. There's loads and loads of rank four options, which is what makes this deck so good. Then we move on to our link plays. We have Curious. Again, it's mandatory in my opinion. Any deck that can make it should be running it. Being able to dump anything, being able to mill loads of stuff, being able to recur resources. It's so easy to make and it's also a light swarm card. So who doesn't fucking love that, right? 
IP Masquerina for being able to interrupt our opponent. This is kind of pretty self-explanatory, at least in my opinion. And our utility cards that are often targets for IP Masquerina. Nightmare Phoenix being able to remove back row. Again, just during your opponent's turn if you make it off Masquerina. We've got Unicorn, which again is a similar sort of story. Being able to spin cards, being able to do it during your opponent's turn. We like that. We have Boral Sword Dragon in here. This could quite easily be Access Code Talker if you have it at your disposal. If you don't, though, this is a really good way to just push for game and incredibly budget-friendly now that it's had multiple reprints. We've got Soyuja Skull Dread. If you can get four cards on the field, this is going to get really fucking nice for you. If you can get the four on the field, draw loads of stuff, mulligan back the shit you don't need that you want to just mill out later on, perfectly good. The fact that it gets you an additional normal summon, well, additional special summon, which will allow you to go off from your place from there, is just really fucking cool. Uh, I really like this card in here. Again, if you can get multiple stuff on the field, why not take advantage of it? And then we move on to the two synchros that we're playing in the deck. Borrowed Savage being one of them. Again, just a really good card for going first, but even going second, it can get massive, which is something to really enjoy making use of. And then our final card, the final Light Swan card as well, so a fitting end to the video. We have Michael the Arc Light Swan here. Uh, this is just a really good bit of spot removal. It allows you to put those monsters back that you want to just be milling out again, which is really nice. It gives you a life point boost. It's just really good all-round card to have access to. And that, my friends, is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully, by the fact that you made it this far, you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe already. If you haven't, though, you definitely fucking should. If you have any comments on what changes you would make to the deck, the kind of things that you'd like to try out, maybe you've played a similar variant in the past and you'd like to comment on cards that you'd like to include in there, definitely go ahead and drop down in the comments. I do read absolutely every comment. If there are some decks you'd like to see covered on the channel, definitely go ahead and let me know. If you've got any interesting variants you'd like to potentially have showcased on here, or any other decks that you're using that you'd like to have showcased on here, definitely reach out and let me know, and I'll take a look at what you have to offer. Again, we don't just do deck profiles here, although we are on a good run of those at the moment. There is plenty of other content out there, how to play videos, combo tutorials, all that kind of good stuff. But anyway, that's enough waffle on from me. Again, if you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.